This leads us to the concept of mutually assured destruction, or MAD. The US monopoly was no longer. The weapons got more deadly than those dropped on Japan, making the atomic bomb look like a butter knife. The world was aghast at the hydrogen bomb, which was lighter, smaller, yet far more deadly. Both the Americans and the Soviets tested even more deadly bombs several times. The most famous American testing during this time period was in the Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands, using a thermonuclear bomb using isotopes of lithium as fission fuel. The prelude of this event led to the forced removal of over 200 natives, along with mass ecological destruction of a once vibrant coral reef system. In 1961, the Soviets outdid the US with the Tsar bomb, another thermonuclear weapon dropped in the Arctic tundra, the largest ever dropped. The Soviets would eventually produce more weapons than the Americans, even though their tech oftentimes lagged behind, so they focused on quantity. The US and Canada would set up NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, as an aerospace warning system, as Soviet nukes would likely cross over the Arctic given the curvature of the Earth. Tactical weapons were produced for small-scale military use on the battlefield in case of a quasi-conventional war, and strategic weapons could be used to destroy the opposing country completely. This leads us to the concept of mutually assured destruction, or MAD. Since the two powers had nukes, engaging in a nuclear exchange would result in both nations being destroyed. This is a lose-lose scenario. Which makes nuclear war, ironically enough, less likely. In fact, it made war as a whole less likely. For had it not been for these weapons, the Cold War probably would have turned hot. As strange as it sounds, the worst weapons of war have ever built set the stage for lasting peace.